All right, Mr. Rubens, can you talk about something that is, will be of interest to you, I assume, uh, your political evolution from a self-described radical centrist two decades ago to a hardline conservative who is making the case tonight that Senator Ayotte is not pure enough as a Republican. What's at your ideological core? I am a person who believes in liberty, as I did 22 years ago uh, when I described myself in that fashion. Uh, back at that time, it was 1992. We face very similar problems now as we did then, except they're far worse. And one of my animating issues is one where I find my opponent promised to be a fiscal conservative, gets down to Washington and votes for trillions of dollars of additional debt. She voted to raid $117 billion from Social Security and eliminated the debt ceiling. So this animated me in 1992. It animates me now. What we need to do about this problem, same as we did then, except it's so much more serious now. We're facing a trillion dollars a year in debt. As far as the eye can see, we need to do what Republicans have done uh, in the 90s, and we need to have U.S. senators with backbone. We need to vote no on these budgets and drag big spending Republicans and Democrats and the president to the bargaining table and balance the budget. This is the single greatest threat to U.S. national security, and it's robbing us of future prosperity. So absolutely, I've not changed on this. Senator, you have the opportunity to respond. You were invoked once again. We have to get our fiscal house in order. As the mother of two children, $19 trillion of debt, we can't pass that on to our children. So I've supported a balanced budget amendment. As on the budget committee, I helped craft the first balanced budget in 14 years. Every committee I serve on, I look for ways to cut wasteful spending, including on the Armed Services Committee, where I cut the missile to nowhere, billions of dollars to a weapons program that was never going to come to fruition. I've also saved money in my personal Senate budget. But, Senator, you voted for trillions of dollars of additional debt, and the votes, the votes right. are what counts. That's where the rubber meets the road. Do you want to respond? Yeah, I, I voted against uh, many Senate uh, Democrat appropriations bills. And, you know, what Mr. Rubens referred to is when I have voted, I voted to make sure that our men and women in uniform have had the resources to fight ISIS or the resources for our heroin, heroin epidemic that I've been fighting for for New Hampshire, or to suspend the medical device tax, which is so important to so many employers in New Hampshire. So yes, I have looked at these bills on a one-on-one -on -one basis to make sure that I'm focusing on what's right for New Hampshire. Back to the panel. Senator, for the uh, you know, one focus of yours uh, throughout this campaign, and tonight certainly, is to talk about your efforts to work in a bipartisan manner to, quote, reach across the aisle. Uh, on a number of fronts, environmental issues to the drug crisis. Uh, but, you know, your voting record for the first half of your term is starkly different from the second half of your term in terms of partisanship. So how do you make the case that your enthusiasm for bipartisan action isn't simply motivated by a coming election? Uh, Josh, I have one of the most bipartisan records in the Senate. But the distinction and, between... And I've also been called a no-labels problem solver. And let me go back to my time as Attorney General first appointed by a Republican governor, twice reappointed by a Democrat governor, and I worked across the aisle then on getting things done to keep the people of New Hampshire safe. This is part of my DNA. It's work that I've done in the Senate, and I've been able to get results, whether it's the heroin legislation, uh, fighting for better care for our veterans, uh, suspending the medical device tax, stopping internet taxes that are coming uh, that'll hurt our state, so I know that we have to work together to get things done, and it actually goes back to my time as Attorney General. Well, so Senator, as a, uh, you, you've been there for six years now. Why is it so hard for Congress in general to get things done? This week's vote on the Zika virus funding being a good example of this. Uh, you know, didn't happen. Lots of finger pointing back and forth. Uh, because that's why we need to build bridges, and so that's my focus has been, you know, find common ground and also work with anyone to solve problems. And to me, that's what we need to do. That's why I do have a bipartisan record. That's why I was able to get the heroin legislation passed. That's why I'm able to get things done, whether it was for our police and fire, they were gonna tax their benefits when their family, for their family members when they were killed in the line of duty, working across the aisle to get national legislation passed to make sure those benefits wouldn't be taxed so that they're treated fairly. Those are areas where, by the way, if you couldn't look for common ground, then you weren't gonna get something done. So Mr. Rubens, you're obviously outspoken about what you believe ought to be done. What makes you capable of reaching across the aisle in the U.S. Senate a highly partisan atmosphere right. to avoid the sort of gridlock that, that right. you complain about. Yeah. 
Well, let me start again with the incumbent here, Senator Ayotte. Her, her approach of bipartisan capitulation to failed policies that have made life worse for Americans, the immense explosion of debt, the open borders, the borders are still wide open, the failure to deal with our veterans' problems, bipartisan capitulation doesn't work. She's got an F from Conservative Review. She's got a 27. She votes like Annie Custer, a liberal Democrat in the, in the second CD in the U.S. Senate. I believe that we need a Republican in the U.S. Senate who votes like a Republican, and we, can, we don't need to abandon our values to solve problems. And I did this when I was in the state Senate. I got the charter school bill passed into law, and I had to get Democrats. I chaired the Granite State Coalition against expanded gambling, and I worked with Senator Ayotte on, 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 on that problem. We kept casinos out of the state for 10 years. So it's not necessary to abandon core values to get stuff done. If you're doing the business of the lobbyists in K Street, yeah, they've bought both Democrats and Republicans, and, and, and this, is, this is what they mean by, part, by, by bipartisanship, okay? I don't buy that stuff. Mr. Rubin, and so you can yeah. certainly respond if you'd like, Senator Ayotte, 30 seconds. Well, I'm about getting results, and I know that one party isn't going to solve everything for us. So, but I have focused on cutting wasteful spending, uh, for example, uh, making sure that money that was going to our enemies uh, passing bipartisan legislation, saving $30 million to do that. Every single committee I work on, I've been focusing on getting our fiscal house in order. And for example, bipartisan legislation called the Duplication Elimination Act to actually take up finally the work of waste, fraud, and abuse. And by the way, it's bipartisan to actually address Senator. these issues. And that's what I think we need to do if Thank we want to get things done. Thank you, Senator.